Okay, so for this video, I'm filming the intro here on my iPhone because when I show you what's happening here with the screen, it's not going to have the rolling black um, unsynced image like it does with my cheap camera. So if it sounds a little bit different or weird and it changes to a different audio when you get on the overhead here shortly, that's why. This is with my iPhone. So what I have here is a 19-inch uh, Wells Gardner K7000. It's a P447B. Uh, which I assume the B stands for brown, which this PCB is the brown one, and you can't see it, but roughly right there, uh, it says P447 Bravo, and I'll show you later. But the issue with this is that this was sent in to another repair person, and they fixed it, and on their setup, everything worked, it ran fine, they sent some in images and a video to the owner of this, and everything was fine. And when the owner of this received it, it didn't work for them. And as a matter of fact, the longer they left it on, this resistor here started to smoke on the neck board. So they shut it down and, and sent it back to that person again, who again didn't find anything wrong with it on their end, and sent it back to the owner. And he plugged it in again. And sure enough, he had the problem you're about to see along with this smoking resistor. So I don't know what's happening. And he contacted me and asked me if I could take a look. I said, sure, no problem. So I sent it in, and I gave it a good look over. I didn't see anything actually wrong that would cause this problem you're about to see. There are some issues that need resolved, but nothing that would cause what you're about to see to occur. So I want to go ahead and show you what's happening so we can get a before picture, so to speak, and see if we can figure out what's happening. I'm going to turn this on, one, two, three. And it comes on just as we'd expect. And what we get is this. It's just a solid... Well, I expected that to not... It's doing, well, that's a little bit, oh, nope. <laughs> there we go. So what you see here is an all blue screen with the raster lines on. The flyback is turned completely down. The flyback is 100% all the way turned down. The All of the color pots are dead center, so it's not, a, not an issue of the blue being turned up too high. And even if it was, we wouldn't have raster lines. So we have an all blue screen with these raster lines. And if you leave this on for a couple of minutes, this resistor starts to get white hot and starts smoking. It's not actually that hot at the moment, but it is fairly warm and it's getting warmer as long as I hold my finger on it. So there's something wrong with our G2 circuit. The G2 circuit that feeds the neck board is way too high. The voltage is way too high, which is what's giving us these raster lines. So this is what it's doing and we gotta see if we can figure out why. So let's get the camera on the overhead and try and figure this out. Okay, so here's the chassis itself on the bench. And I refer to this as a P447B for the brown, but apparently it's just labeled P447. Now, I've never known this this version of the, of the K7000 with the brown PCB and the ribbon cable instead of the individual wires to the remote board. And this with this style flat type of, of uh, potentiometer, I have never seen one of these with the ribbon cable and this type of, these type of pots that wasn't a P447B Bravo, but this one just has P447. So that's a little bit odd, but it doesn't matter. Um, I talked to the owner of this, and he told me that, I, I asked him if he was also getting the blue screen with the, the retrace lines. I referred to them as raster lines. They're technically retrace lines. I asked him via message if he was also getting the blue screen with the retrace lines, and he said he, uh, he didn't know because he couldn't ever keep it on long enough to get the screen to come up because the resistor would immediately turn red hot and start smoking, like within three seconds. But on my end, as you saw, I had it operating and working, and this only really ever got lukewarm or warm to the touch. Not anywhere near what the problem was that he was describing on his end. So he actually has another chassis that he hooked up to that same tube that this was on and doing the testing. Same tube, same connections, same cabinet, same everything, and hit the other one did not have an issue. It turned on and operated just fine, as what he was saying. So that's a very odd thing, and it just so happens that he sent that one to me as well because he wants it rebuilt. And that is this one right here. And as you can see, this is the same type of thing. We got the remote board with the ribbon cable, the same flat type of pots, and it's got the brown PCB. And this one's actually a P447 Delta. I don't know if you can even see that, P447 Delta. So I'm not really sure kind of what's going on here. You don't see a lot of these versions of the 7000 floating around out there. But this is all original. And actually, it has the 13-inch the little frame here. I, on, 
I've only ever seen in my life, even up here on the bench, my little 13-inch K7000 uh, new old stock monitor I got a number of years ago, right up here on the bench, I've got a 13-inch K7000 with this little thing on it. But what's odd is that he put this on a 19-inch tube, the same tube that this other one was burning up on, and it turned on and worked just fine. However, in an attempt to verify that my Fisher tube isn't the problem of the all blue screen with the retrace lines, I hooked this up to the same tube and on, on my tube, I don't get an image at all. I get heater glow, it turns on, we get high voltage, but I have absolutely no image whatsoever. Flyback maxed out, brightness contrast maxed out, color pots maxed out. I get no image whatsoever with this chassis on my test tube. And uh, the same test tube that this one provides the all blue screen with the retrace lines. So we may do a separate video with this one in a part two series of these two for the same person. But for this video, we're gonna try and figure out why, at least on my end, I'm getting the all blue screen with the retrace lines. I do not get the all blue screen with the retrace lines using this chassis. So I know the tube isn't the cause of our problem. We gotta figure out what's going on now. Maybe a two-fold issue. And if we look here, you'll notice that this only has R213 on here. There's only one resistor. But this neck board for the P447D has two separate resistors here. Uh, there is R213 and they have a separate resistor here that I don't think actually is that crucial um, because I don't see really any evidence of it really ever being there. However, well having said that, maybe not. It's These resistors are different ratings. Let's see, this one is a red, red, silver, silver. This one is a silver, black, gold, gold. It's not even not even close to the same. Plus, you'll notice that this leg is in the far pin hole, and this one's in the close pin hole, and then the other resistor's in the, the far pin hole. So maybe there's something up with that. Uh, however, I don't think that's our main problem because it wasn't glowing white hot, and it wasn't that hot to the touch, and we were able to get an image almost immediately. So there is something else wrong with this that's causing our blue screen with the retrace lines. Now that's, like I said, that's off the G2 circuit. So the owner of this had a tech come out to take a look at it. And he removed, there was a brand new flyback installed on this and he removed that flyback and put in a, an original flyback onto here to see if maybe that was the cause of this resistor burning up and it wasn't because it still did it. So it's not the flyback, but he wants the original flyback that was on here, the new original flyback, put back on. And we can see here, we look on the bottom, that there is a missing pad. But of course that missing pad has a no connection, so that's fine. But also, looking at the bottom of this, it needs a bit of a reflow because the input header pins weren't reflowed. Uh, there's some little hackery going on here with this. I don't even know why that's like that. And then we have the heat sink here. Uh, is not soldered back in. I don't even know why it would have been removed, maybe to try and replace some of these caps. I don't know, but it has been capped and it has been reworked and it worked just fine on the, on the bench of the previous repair person. And when the owner of this got it, it wasn't even able to be left on long enough before this started smoking. So I don't have an answer. It's not doing that for me. It's not doing that for the other repair person. All I can do is get this working to a state to where it's operational with no problem on my end. If I send this back to the owner and he has the same problem with this smoking, at least we know it's not a problem with this. It's something on his system or something with his system that's not compatible with this particular version of the chassis. Now this has been, uh, this is going in a Play Choice 10, a single monitor Play Choice 10 and it already has had the color inversion mod performed. You cut out Q4, you change some of these, uh, you move some of the jumpers here, and you add in a three resistors. And I already have a video on that, and he is requesting that I perform that mod on this 7000, so we'll review that again when I go to work on this one. So, that being said, that long diatribe there, hopefully you understand what's going on, but we're gonna have to see if we can figure out why it's why we have an all blue screen with the retrace lines now the first thing i really want to take a look at is that he sent the flyback that was originally in here before they put this factory one back in he sent that with everything and let's just take a look at it and see i don't know what's up with this it looks like someone tried to cover up a, a hole in it it's weird, but 
I wonder if we go ahead and just try to put this one back in. Because, like I say, that, that overly blue image with the retrace lines, that's almost absolutely a G2 voltage issue. Our G2 voltage is sky high. Uh, and, you know, if you had a shorted blue transistor, you wouldn't have the retrace lines. You'd have an all blue screen, but you wouldn't have the retrace lines. The retrace lines are a G2 issue, to the best of my knowledge. And we can check to make sure the blue, which I believe is Q203, that should be going to the blue drive pots. And yes, it follows around this way and goes right over here. So this is our blue transistor. We can just check that. I mean, I could be wrong, but I've never seen a transistor short and cause the retrace lines. So if we go to, let's say, the green one, I believe we go positive with our meter and dial. The positive should be the top pin, and then the negative, should, we should have 0.5 voltage drop to each of the outer pins. No, that's not right. Okay, so it's the red lead on... Uh, well, I don't know if this is collector or base, but it's the red lead on this pin here. And 0.5 to the top and the left left one here, so 0.6 and 0.6. Here's the red one, 0.6 and 0.6. Now the blue one, 0.6 and 0.6. Yeah, so I'm I, I say I'm pretty confident that it's not an issue of the uh, the transistor there. But what mystifies me here is that it only shows R213 on the silk screen, and it looks like someone has done some reflow here on this. But yeah, it's very odd. Like he said that he wasn't having the problem until they replaced this, but I don't think the next socket is our problem. What does this read here? So this resistor on this neck board reads 2.2 ohms. On this other one, well, voltage always takes the path of least resistance, but this other resistor is parallel with this one, so it's probably not going to read the same. It's 1.0. This one's going to be 1.0 also. I'm going to have to Take this, get off of there, you. Take this off of here. Ah, uh, come on, this thing went cold on me. Um, uh, I need to stop turning the iron on before I need to use it, because it goes, it goes cold on me, and I gotta wait, you know, a minute for it to warm back up here, so bear with me. If I was any good at editing, I would just edit this minute out of the video, but we're already at 500 again, so that should be enough to get this out of here. Yeah, okay. So now we can measure these separately. And on this one, 2.3, so that's correct, it's weird. Then this one that's parallel with it is 1.2. So I don't understand why this other resistor's here. I mean, I got some 1.2 resistors. We can put that in, the, in here, but I don't think that's our problem. Because this is P447D, this is just P447. This is an early revision of this board. It's maybe just the earliest revision. That's why there's no Bravo next to it. But, uh, hmm. I wonder if we... You know, the, the first thing I thought is that maybe the G2 and the focus wires were backwards, but the, the thicker wire is the focus that's going to the focus pin. The thinner wire is G2, it's going to G2, so that's all fine. We don't have a backwards C204. Um, so I just wonder if maybe our... Because it was smoking with this flyback installed. I wonder if... Because they put this flyback in and it was still smoking on their end. So I just wonder if I could put this back in and see if we still get our overly blue screen.
Yes. Hmm. Because I had the fly, the flyback is 100% all the way down, and we still had the blue screen with the retrace line. So that shouldn't be. Something is being way overdriven. And it's either going to be the flyback or something on the neck board. And we could swap the neck boards with no problem. You just got to desolder this focus pin and the G2 pin and swap it out. Oh, you know what? Let's. He wants me to put this flyback back in anyway. So let me get that done. And then I'm going to try it out, see what I get. If it doesn't work, I'll just come back here and we will swap out neck boards and try that. So I'm going to take this out, put this in, and then I'm going to try it. And I'll film it, and if it works, then you'll see on camera. But if I just cut back here in a few seconds, you see it back on the bench, you'll know it doesn't work here. So let me try that first and see what I get. Okay, just cutting in here real quick. I'm taking the flyback out. When I went to remove the focus wire, I noticed that the focus pin's not actually soldered in. If we zoom in here you can see that this isn't that's not soldered in right there and that's the focus pin that goes from here through to there so this part it's a ground pin now uh, you'll need to see if it but it looks like it's soldered in let's just see if there's nothing here or if there's a oh there's an actual pin in there I'm not sure if that, I'm not sure what's going on here. That pin is being pulled out of, it was soldered in. That pin's being pulled out of the socket. Look at this. See? That pin's being, is not secure in here. I can push this back in like that. So, that's no good. Well, I'm going to put this fly back in and replace this next socket because maybe this next socket is our problem. Because he did say he didn't have this problem until the next socket was replaced. So let me replace this and see what that does. I'll get this changed out. I'll get this. I don't think this was the problem, but he wants the this one put back in, so I'll do that. But I think our problem after looking at this is the next socket is our might be our, let's I'll get this changed out and get the new the old flyback put back in and see where we're at and give it a test. All right, so the next socket has been successfully replaced. I stole this off of a replacement or I'm sorry, no. The replacement has been stolen off of a spare parts neck board that I've got uh, 3000 of here in this bucket. So I replaced that. Here is the original one with the broken uh, whoop, I dropped the closeout piece that broken pin that pops out. So after replacing this and then putting the original new fly back in, uh, here's what we got. So that solved the issue. It's backwards because I have the uh, horizontal uh, yoke connection flipped, but it's working now. So the problem almost definitely was this because like he said, it wasn't having any issues until they changed the next socket. So I'm confident that maybe this was the cause of everything on his end and what have you on my end with the blue screen with the retrace lines because now with this changed out now it's not blue with the retrace lines anymore so good and I need to go through and do some adjustments and things you can see that it's already inverted uh, and I need to flip this pin 4 here or dip switch 4 and that should give us actual RGB yeah there we go so if I flip dip switch 4 back off it flips back to inverted uh, yep, there you go. So, yeah. Oh, come on. There we go. And it's blue, it's a BGR, because like I say, the horizontal yoke winding connector is backwards. But so, okay, so we are not burning up this resistor, and if anything, it's barely, barely warm. Uh, I have to say that this is now fixed, and the only thing that was really wrong with it was this bad neck socket. So I'll let this run for about half an hour and make sure that doesn't glow white hot and burn up. It's already working because, I mean, it's operational, uh, and let the owner know. And I think we may just go ahead and try and troubleshoot this other one that uh, has no uh, raster at all, no image at all, with the flyback cranked up and brightness contrast cranked up and color pots cranked up. There's heater glow. 
Uh, we have high voltage, but there's absolutely nothing on the screen with the same setup here. So I think we'll just go ahead and switch to this. This one just needs some reflow and a little bit of rework. No problem, it's operational. But this one has issues that we need to try and tackle. So I think we'll just move on to this one, see if we can get this one working and knock out both of these in one video. All right, so here we are with chassis number two of the pair. I had talked about how this one was operational, but I couldn't get a video image on the screen. I had maxed out the flyback, turned the brightness contrast up. I had maxed out all the color pots, I, and I got nothing on the screen. I had high voltage, it powered up, normal sounds. I had neck glow, all this normal stuff, but there was just no image on the screen. Well, I didn't actually connect a video signal to it. Uh, normally, if you max out the flyback, you should at least get retrace lines and a gray screen and all that, but I was getting absolutely nothing. And the reason for that was because this particular setup actually has this little resistor here uh, in the heat shrink. Let me zoom in here for you. The can, there we go. There is a resistor assembly here inside this heat shrink, and it's going directly to the frame here to ground. So this is bleeding off some of the focus voltage. It's not bleeding off the G2 voltage. It's bleeding off some of the focus voltage directly to the frame. Now, it may be G2 voltage as well, but you can see here the G2 wire is going directly to the neck board right off the flyback. So this is actually coming off of the focus wire. So it's bleeding some of that voltage to ground, which is why I'm assuming when I max out the flyback, I did not get any retrace lines or the gray screen. So I assumed that there was something wrong with this, but after hooking it back up here to do this part of the video, I gave it a video signal with the TPG, and it actually does work. So there's nothing actually wrong with it. I do need to make some adjustments here just to do a little uh, before to make sure everything's okay before I do the cap kit. All the caps are original. Uh, all the No one has ever touched this from what I can tell. And I did think that it was a 13-inch chassis because there is a bracket here that's attached to the heatsink that I've only ever seen on the 13-inch 7000. I have a 13-inch 7000 new old stock here on my test bench that I've been using for years, and this has the exact same bracket. So I assumed that this was for a 13-inch, because I've only ever seen them on a 13-inch, but alas, it is in fact a 19-inch. So I don't have an explanation for that, but the reason I was testing this when I was testing it off camera uh, before I had worked on the first one when I first got it, I didn't have any actual retrace or gray screen because of that resist, that bleeder resistor that's in there. I'm not sure what that's for. I've come across that a couple of times, but that's what's happening here. So anyway, after giving it a proper video signal, it does work. However, we have some 50, 60 hertz shenanigans going on here, so I want to adjust this stuff before I work on it in case it doesn't work afterward. I know it had an issue prior as well, so let's adjust this 50, 60 hertz pot. There we go, that should work. And we need to adjust our H position over some touchy controls there. Vertical size. Uh, vertical position. That's good. Well, that's not bad, actually. Um, let's turn our brightness down till our background is black right about there and hey that's not bad at all uh, the focus though if i recall had to be maxed out so here's the focus completely maxed out if i turn it back to the left it gets out of focus so the flyback's going to have to be changed because i have to you want the flyback uh, focus pot to be roughly about in the middle or two-thirds for proper Focus, if you have to max it completely out for it to get in focus, then the flyback is going out and you need to change it. So he did, the owner of this did provide me with a new flyback and he specifically requested me to replace it. But I told him I'll only replace it if this flyback is actually faulty because there's no reason to replace a good one with an aftermarket one. Easy for me to say aftermarket one because if they're, these are notoriously unreliable. And so it's luck of the draw whether you get a good one or not. And there's no reason to replace a working one with a aftermarket one if this one's working. So it does work and operate as you can see. However, I have to have the focus completely maxed out, which means the internal focus resistor is going bad. And, you know, it could have something to do with this thing, but I don't think so. So when I replace this flyback, or when I put this flyback on here as a replacement, I'm not gonna include all that stuff to put it back together, so. But as you can see, it does operate. I do need to make sure that the width 
actually is adjustable so I'll grab the width tool here and I'll put this in the width coil and oh yeah perfect there we go so I think we're gonna have a successful rebuild here so this cuts our work down tremendously because it, it operates uh, we don't have to worry about power supply problems or anything like that. We'll just do the cap kit, the reflow, the color inversion mod, and hopefully, well, and change the flyback. And hopefully this will be good to go. And we'll have two for two here for this person. And uh, let's get cracking on that. I'm going to take this off of here and we'll get cracking on um, the color inversion mod. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the cap kit and the flyback off camera. I've got plenty of videos on that stuff. And for this one, I'll cut, cut away, come back, I'll have all that work done, the rework, the cap kit, the flyback, and then we'll do the color inversion mod. So as you can see here, it's normal RGB. The color inversion mod, when we get done, it should be inverted color when we do go to test this. So I can simulate that right now by flipping that switch, switch number four, and turn this off and back on. Uh, you can see here that switch number four on this uh, is I and V for inverted, normal Operation is RGB with the switches up and I turned it off and on colors are still correct If I flip the inversion switch and turn this off and on colors are still correct, but it only inverts the RGB See here. This is inverted RGB if I flip switch number four It goes back to normal so when we turn this off and on, if our color inversion mod is successful, regardless of the position of the switch, which we actually need to leave it engaged for proper RGB when the colors are inverted, uh, this should have an inverted screen too. So when you flip this switch, it only affects the RGB screen, not the main front screen here when you turn it on, the initial screen. So this should be inverted as well when we turn this on after our inversion mod. So let me get all the work done. I'll cut back on here and we'll get ready to do the inversion mod and we'll test it afterward. And hopefully that'll be two for two and we'll wrap this up, so stand by. Okay, so full cap kit's done, full reflow is done, inspection is done, this thing's ready to go. Flyback has changed the whole nine yards. So the only thing left now to do is to do the requested color inversion mod. So the Nintendo games, the single monitor play choice tens, the dual monitor play choice tens, the red tint, the, the Sharp XM1801 the, for the Nintendo red tint. Oh, what else? I think that might be it, but the, like Donkey Kong, all the Nintendo games in the arcades were all used, uh, all used inverted colors, meaning that the red, green, and blue were you know, inverted backwards in the signal. So in order for you to use a normal, regular, non-inverted chassis, you have to invert the colors. Like the Sharp XM1801 on the red tent had a switch you could flip to switch to inverted to non-inverted. And the Sanyo 20EZ had a little uh, inverter board mounted on the top of the flyback cage you could use to switch some connections and invert and non-invert the colors. But for these, your only option was ever really regular standard RGB. But you can easily convert the K7000 to inverted colors with a very simple set of procedures here. So the first thing we have to do is Q4. Q4 has to come out. Q4, get that sucker out of there. These three bipolar caps, they need to move to the other position. You can see there's two open spots there, two open spots there, two open spots there. We take these three bipolar caps and shift them up one position to those empty spots. Then we have to remove the jumper here at J8, the jumper at J9, the jumper at J10, and move them to the upper spot as well. Just like the, the caps here, the jumper needs to move to the top spot, jumper moves to the top spot, jumper moves to the top spot. Then, in the original position that these jumpers were in, that's where we install, install these 680 ohm resistors. So, that being said, I'm going to turn my fan on here, and we're going to first remove the Q4 transistor here. So, it's very simple. The easiest way is to just add a bunch of solder directly onto the Q4 legs, which are uh, right here. We'll just add a bunch of solder to these legs here. Right here. And then as we heat those pads up, we can pull the transistor right out. So I'm holding on to it, and we'll just heat up these pads, and it should come right out. There it is. 
quick and easy. I mean, you could just cut it off if you want, but you know, if you ever wanted to reinstall it and you hang on to it and save it, then you would uh, want to hang on to it. So, or if you ever need to reinstall it or put in another chassis or Q4 goes bad, whatever, you have one on hand. There's no reason to cut the legs off if you could just easily take this out. What am I doing here? I What am I clearing the holes out for? I am a nincompoop. I'll tell you what. A numbskull nincompoop. Nothing's going back in there, you dullard. So <laughs> Q4 is now removed, and there it is. So now we can remove these three bipolar caps, which we're going to put the new ones in their place. So we don't need to worry about reusing these. So this one, I believe, is yeah, here. And again, I just go back and forth. I rock one leg out, rock the other leg out, caps out. Uh, rock one leg out, rock the other leg out, cap is out. Rock one leg out, the other leg out, cap is out. It takes one second. So now we can, well, we need to open up the holes directly above. can install our three new ones here. These are bipolar, so polarity doesn't matter. Don't put it in the wrong spot. I am a nincompoop. An ultra maroon, or, or a darn fool idiot, however you want to refer to it. Okay, so there's those three in the upper spots, as you can see. You darn fool idiot galoot. We'll fill these original holes up here. We'll try anyway. There we go. We're being stubborn. All right. There we go. It's just that easy. So we'll cut these legs off here. So there's those. I'm going to mark them before I forget because I have a tendency to do that. I go through and mark these so in the future anyone who comes across this, if they weren't, if they're not familiar with what the replacement caps look like, they'll know that they've been replaced. So now, with that done, we have to remove the three jumpers and move them up one location. So if we look on the back here, it's going to be uh, J10. We'll start with that one. J10. Let's actually let's open up these holes here first. All right. So now we need to get J10 out of here. Be careful if you're doing this that you don't damage the pads. Make sure it's free and clear before you do that. So let's get J10 out of here and we'll put new component legs in. So there's our J10 removed. I'm just going to throw that away. Uh, you know, we can use the legs from the resistors here for new jumpers. So now let's get rid of J9. And, OK, 
Okay. Yes, that's a rather uh, brute force method of doing it, but you know, if you remove all the solder, you don't really got to worry about damaging the pad. So just make sure all the solder is removed before you try and poke that leg open. Or I'm just using the tip of the iron to bend the leg straight, so to speak. Just make sure all of your solder is removed. So that was three successful ventures there on getting these jumpers out. So there's J9, it's out, and J8 is out. Boom, there we go. So let's grab three 680 ohm resistors, and we'll bend our legs thusly. Put these guys in here in the original J10 location. One, there's two for one for oh, one for J nine. Okay, and one more for J eight. There you have it. Nice. Okay. So we're going to kind of hold these in place here. And then we're going to bend these legs out slightly. All right. Now I want to hold, I want to just go through here and solder one side in at a time. Then I want to look and see if they're sitting flat. No, that one's not. So we'll push on the resistor as we heat up the leg that we just soldered. So now, there, that's nice and flat. We'll go to this one. That's nice and flat. We'll go to this one. That's nice and flat. And if we look on the top, there we have it. So now we just need to solder in the other leg and we'll be good. Oh, no, don't fill the hole, you dummy. you got to put the jumper in. Ah, uh, you guys, where were you on that one? All right. You didn't stop me. You let me sit. You sat right there and let me fill that hole with solder, and I shouldn't have. Some friends you are. Okay, now do I want to use the legs? These are pretty thin. I think maybe I think maybe I'll use some of the legs from the capacitors I just snipped off. So if I can find them. I threw them all in the garbage here. There we go. Here's one that will work. After I cut the legs off. Again, remember, I'm a dullard. I forgot to do that. All right. Let's see if we can maneuver these into a jumper position. Oh, yeah, these are going to be much better than those thin legs on those resistors. So let's... Well, how about that? That was perfect first try. There's that one. I bent it a little bit. Now I'm frustrated. Dang it. I didn't want... It looks... Now it looks terrible. Oh, well. So there's that one. Let's do one more here. Sorry about that bad camera work. All right, and one more. I want to set this like that. All right, one more here. Is this going to be too short? I think this is going to be too short here. 
Alright, well that's all I get for that one. Cut my life into pieces. I just need one darn leg. There we go. I didn't... I don't have any forethought and I just threw all, you know, cut the legs off and threw them in the garbage and I didn't have any forethought on what I was going to do here later, so... It goes with the territory. Let's get this last one in here. Oh, come on, you dirty, rotten bum, you. There we go. I'll be much happier with those jumpers than those thin resistor legs. Okay. Now, now I can solder those in, you, ding, you dingus, as they say. Am I a hipster doofus? Look at me, look at me. Am I a hipster doofus? Okay. One. Two. Three. I need to trim this one. That one. Okay, now let's clean this up. Butamus. Well, that's it. Uh, I think we have a successful job here. Put these back in the container and let's just take a little closer look at our handiwork here. So everything's been reflowed. The voltage regulator pins, all the stuff here in this area, especially the width coil, our yoke header pins. The flyback is replaced and all cleaned up. Uh, we reflowed the ribbon cable from here to here that's on the top because those solder joints get very dry. We got R101, R89, R104, thermistor, R103, video input header pins, and all the ancillary connections that anything that looked a little rough, it's all good. So the top side as well is in good shape, nice and clean. And if I didn't think, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this is an extremely low hour and or very clean chassis. Someone could have cleaned it, but I don't have an explanation as to why that flyback had to be completely maxed out on the focus. Like normally, normally on a good flyback, you'll see here that if I completely, if I completely max out the focus, I can't turn it any more clockwise. That's where the old flyback had to be to get good focus. What you want is roughly right about there. Anywhere between here and there, about 50 to 75, that's where you want good focus. If you have to go all the way to 100, then that flyback has an intern... There's an internal resistor that has to deal with your focus voltage, and if you have to crank it to the 100%, then it's on its way out. So, uh, I'm gonna... I went ahead and changed it because the customer actually wanted me to, or the owner of this wanted me to, and the, that coupled with the fact that the focus had to be maxed out, yeah, I'll, I'll change it out. That's fine. But everything else looks fairly good, so... I'm still mystified as to what that's doing there, but we saw it works fine on the 19 inch, so we'll be good. So now all we have to do here is hook this back up to the tube, and we turn on the test pattern generator, that first main screen should have inverted colors. If it does, mission accomplished. So let's get that done and see how it turns out. All right, so we are back on the tube. Everything's hooked up. We got our anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and remote. All of our critical seven. You always want to check before you power up a chassis after you've been working on it. We're good to go. We're sitting on the frame correctly, not going to short out. So we'll turn this on, and I do have the inverted color switch in the on position. So again, remember that that switch doesn't have any effect on the main screen. It only affects the RGB colors, the screen that has the RGB bars. So in this circumstance, with the inversion switch selected on, normally your RGB would be inverted. 
But with it on, when we go to RGB, it should be regular standard RGB. And if we turn the switch off for non-inverted, then we should have inverted. And regardless of that, our main screen should have uh, yellow now instead of blue. And the, the black should be white. The yellow should be, or I'm sorry, the black should be white. The blue should be yellow. And I think white is still white. So, but uh, that being said, let's find out here. One, two, three. All right, comes on. What do we get? Yes! <laughs> it works. Oh, and check this out. I actually get retrace lines with this flyback. So if I was to turn black level completely down, contrast completely down, see this? See how I have the gray screen with the retrace lines? I did not have that with this flyback. And that's due to this thing. If anybody knows exactly what this is, let me know. But it's just, I think it's a big resistor in here that they put some heat shrink over and touch it to ground. And you can see it comes off with a focus wire here. The thin wire is the G2 with the terminal and the fat wire is focus. So I'm not really sure they're feeding the focus voltage to ground. If you're familiar with what that is or why they do that, let me know. But this also had a crack across the face of it here. So yeah, I'm comfortable changing it out. But we have the screen pot too high, so I'm going to... Oh, I'm, well, I bumped my desk, my workbench here, and my uh, canister of contact cleaner fell off. Sorry about that. If that scared you, jump scare. So let's turn this down until the screen is black again, right there. And now we'll turn our black level up until our background is no longer black. Uh, we'll go right here and then back down till it just goes black right there then we'll turn up our contrast as needed a little bit too dark still we'll turn our black level back up a bit that's pretty good and i say that's pretty darn good let's see what our focus ends, ends up needing to be here so we'll go to our focus pot and we'll turn that and let's see here so that's all the way clockwise. <laughs> Quite a bit different from the other one. That's 100%, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's 100% counterclockwise. And that is 100% clockwise. And if we go back to the left a little bit, roughly there, uh, that right there is about right up 50%. So that's what you want. I know you couldn't see it, but turning it back there, that's pretty much darn right on a 50%. So, let's go to our RGB. Color bars are fine, but RGB, good. If I turn the inversion switch off to simulate this being ran on a 7000 without the inversion mod, it should go to inverted. There you go. So, yep, our inversion mod is successful, and we have good RGB, and I have to say that this is good. So, it won't do me any good to hook up an actual PCB like I have MK2 at the ready there, but the colors will be inverted. Uh, but for, in, for all intents and purposes, this is complete. So, yeah, two for two. This one is successful. If you know what's going on here, let me know. We already know how the first one turned out and what's going on with that. So, that being said, everything's ready to go. I'll get these boxed up, sent back to the owner, send in the video once it's done processing, and he should be happy. So, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you comment down below, like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, make sure you say. Uh, I already said that, but I'm a little redundant. That's why I'm a dullard. <laughs> <laughs> I always say the same thing on every outro and somehow I still screw it all up. So thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.